and we have to find those balances because if we right. go outside of our resource center, mm -hmm. then we go into judgments and we go into those fight or flights or we go into those depressive, like where we like, you know, go into the, like the back to the old possum. We yeah. shut down. Yeah. No, I, I think I've done that. In fact, the last couple of years, I don't mind telling people, you know, I, I, you know, still going through stuff, but um, kind of shut down. Like I didn't want to reach out, even though I kept podcasting and did different work and stuff, but uh, personal relationships and stuff. I didn't keep in contact with a lot of friends. I'm like, I'm just laying low, right? Like a possum just <laughs> because I didn't know what to think of my own emotions, let alone getting involved in anyone else's. But it's funny because um, earlier this year, I decided I didn't realize I was depressed. And I didn't know until I read a book because I don't sit there uh, on the couch crying, watching romance <laughs> movies or something. Like I just start second guessing myself a lot and being indecisive and and everything. And, but the minute I realized that was a symptom or, a, you know, an expression of it, I was like, oh, okay. And then in the same book I was reading, it's like, yeah, you know, reach out to people or whatever. So I started reaching out and that's when I was like, oh my goodness, I am surrounded by a very strong and healthy family and friend network. And everyone else is going through garbage in their life too. And it was very therapeutic. And now like I'm kind of returning to my little nudge mode, you know, like, okay, every day I'm like, okay, who can I reach out to? What can I say? Maybe I'll inch out and put a little more on social media. That's personal. Cause sometimes I go back and hide posts. And stuff. <laughs> like, it's just this weird thing, but to go, oh, wow. We do things to protect ourselves, Even when we are trying to we're, we're reaching out without reaching out sometimes for help. And like, even what you, I've seen you done recently. Like I know how much courage it takes to do some of these things because on, in the one end, you're this super smart, talented person um, naturally, and because of a lot of learning and hard work. Um, and so you should have everything work out fine all the time, right? Because you know about energy, you know about the mind, you know about the health, but garbage happens no matter how you're living. Right? Mm -hmm. And I have seen lots of garbage coming to lots of people's lives. And that's why I kind of took on the phrase wounded alpha female for a while. I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of wounded alphas. And now I'm going, well, wait a second. Maybe there's something going on where we're all experiencing stuff. And if we can power through and learn from it, you emerge the other end was it you that said today, a rising Phoenix, and then you're even more powerful, even though you felt yeah. super weak in the process. Yeah. And, you know, I was really aligning with that, like, probably a year ago, the wounded alpha female, right? And yeah. I realized, no, it's the healing alpha female. Mm. Right? We were wounded. Yeah. We are now healing. Because the way I've looked at it, like even with, um, you know, I've been married for 32 years and my marriage has come to an end, right? Like I'm in the process oh. of divorce. Well, I can look back at 20, you know, three-year-old me mm -hmm. and where I was in my life. And I had a return of an abusive ex that wanted to marry me the following year. And then I met this guy and he, unbeknownst to me, was like, I need to escape my family. I, I don't feel comfortable being in this strict religious household that doesn't mm. seem to align to me and I want to be free. Yeah. And we came together and we got married really quickly and we didn't even know each other. But wow. we were like each other's escape. Mm. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that we never grew into it all oh right and so we never healed ourselves if we would have healed together as we were growing and experiencing right like yeah. it would have been different but so right. when you take one person in the equation which this could be with the business this could be in a family unit right siblings right. it doesn't matter friend group 
and they suddenly start working on all of those things mm. that made them feel so much like they had to run and escape when they were 20 years old right. and they start working on that and healing that and especially with an alpha female right because now yeah. like you're strong anyway you're strong and independent mm-hmm. and you start healing those things well you're not it's kind of like why there's so many organics out there moms that are like i'm not going to feed my kids a bunch of pesticide laden foods yeah right right, right. suddenly there's Explodes a bunch of organics. possibilities yeah yeah so when you start having these possibilities show up Mm-hmm. And any person or place situation in your life cannot rise up with you. You get that tension again, right? Right, right. And if you can't balance it, then, you know, that's the end. And that really is the, like, <laughs> if we have a mantra for life, mm. it's balancing ourselves right? Mm -hmm. Every day it's balancing. How do I balance my relationships? How do I balance my mindset? How do I balance my heart? How do I balance what I'm eating? How do I, you know, balance my energy levels? Like everything is balance. Without light, there'd be no dark. Without, (laughs) you know, the day there would be no night. Right. Without pain, there would be no joy. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's so fun talking to you because there's, we can go in any direction and there's always wisdom going on, (laughs) (laughs) but like, but that I think is the, um, what be, as you become more aware and you're working on yourself, um, I I'm assuming all of us, we go through these periods where I, I remember when I was working on myself many times in the past, if someone wasn't working on themselves, I could go into judgment about them very quickly. But as I've had more trials, challenges, learning all those things in my life. Every week I have more compassion and empathy on people. When I notice I'm like, oh, they, they have not gone through this thing yet. You know, that's giving them that understanding and I'm learning about it just now too, you know, but to go so much of its personal expectation management, because as you're changing, you see the difference between who you are and who you want to be or who you were and that kind of, and that creates this pain. And I talk to so many people, they're like, well, it shouldn't be this way because I'm doing this right or this. And they're like, no, no, there's always like, I love the concept. I don't know who shared it, but as your joy increases, so does the opportunity for pain and hardship and stuff, because there always has to be that opposite going on. And Mm -hmm. I think people that are powerful have learned how to live within that space really well knowing, yeah, it's going to be awesome. But I know that in this awesome life, I'm also going to, there's going to be stuff. (laughs) Yeah. And, and, you know, there has been a lot of hurt and I did go back to cookies anonymous and, (laughs) you know, going through (laughs) my, my trials. Um, but I also understand that like, I'm like, well, You know, I got to have that little bit of compassion because even though I can have healthy boundaries within my relationships and with my ex, like there's also that compassion that I know he has not started the healing process yet. Right. Yeah. And he still is going to have to go through that in some way, shape or form Mm -hmm. because we all do. Right. And so the only thing that I can do is like. I tell my daughter all the time, I'm like, right, this is your father. You're going to want him to walk you down the aisle one day. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And let's go for a walk. (laughs) Let's, let's make something good to eat tonight. Right. Like let's reinforce the good. Right. Yeah. And not the bad. And I think that's just kind of the, my hope with when I write the books that I've written is that it's just trying to help people see that, yeah, we are, we're all human. I'm human. You're human. And we're all just connecting the dots. Yeah. And we're like, it was funny when I first thought about this today, the, uh, the word came to my head and I was like trapezoid. Why would a trapezoid come to my head to think about this? Hmm. But the trapezoid is such an interesting like shape that it doesn't matter how small it is 
or how big you make it, right? It's still a trapezoid. Yeah. But the surface area just gets bigger. The volume just gets bigger, but it's still a trapezoid. Right. <laughs> I like it because it's not symmetrical. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. There's, there's something nice about it not being this perfectly symmetrical box, I guess. And um, we're not perfect, but we are all, we're all in it together. Yeah. And breath work has become so important, right? And that's important when yeah. I talk about the vagus nerve, breath work and breathing, right? It stimulates that vagus nerve. When we breathe, we also are creating that natural DMT that gives us that visual imagination or that sort of sensual imagination that we need to right. kind of explore outside of ourselves. Yeah. And um, we are exchanging atoms in our breath work with mm -hmm. every person on this planet. But oh, wow. you'll breathe in one atom at some point in your life that is a T-Rex. It's still somewhere here in this planet, right? It's still right. part of the, the dust <laughs> that got created here. Yeah. So you are, I'm part of you, you're part of me. So when we talk about even somebody that's not religious, if they talk about being, you know, part of source. Yeah. Well, yeah. At some point in this actual lifetime, you have breathed in something of an experience, even if it was one tiny molecule of air of everyone else. Right. Well, I, I, <laughs> Even quite literally, in your example, I have an uncle who's an archaeologist. <laughs> I love that. digs six months a year. <laughs> so I have breathed it. I've had it. A lot of T-Rex. <laughs> a lot of woolly mammoths. <laughs> <laughs> He's always down in Central America <laughs> doing all the digging. And so, but, but I think when you describe it that way, it's a reminder that of part of all of our purpose on earth in this life is to help uh, for us each to figure out, you know, ourselves and our relationship to source, as you said, and um, kind of manifesting our full potential, but also helping everyone around us do the same. Yeah. Uh, so regardless of what, and, and we're not all for everybody, but no, there's always somebody <laughs> that we are needed to interact and with people come into your life every one of them for a reason there's something you are supposed to be learning from that yeah. person in yeah. some way shape or form and the one of the biggest ones that i've learned thank goodness because of all the people i've worked with nutritionally right mm. is that when i first like when i first started paleo veggio it was because i was told you cannot be paleo and vegan. And I was like, in your face, I'll show you, <laughs> right? <laughs> like stubborn me, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> right. And even in that, like I realized there was ebb and flow, right? Like, like I just posted today about buckwheat. I love buckwheat. It's gluten-free, but it's got very high nutrition. It's the highest level of like the polyphenols in all of the pseudo cereals. And it's wow. bland, so you can make it savory, you can make it sweet, you can do, you know, and it's a good alternative where people can't eat oats. And it's a good alternative because oats are often like, if you have celiac, you're not gonna eat oats because they get contaminated with gluten a lot, right? Um, and a lot of people are like, I can't eat rice, hmm. right? because, well, it's not glycemic or this or that or the other, right? And mm. brown rice can be really hard on your gut, even though it's more nutritional. So mm. whole buckwheat is a really good source of so many good things, and it's a great thing to use. But in the traditional paleo, well, no, that would be a no-no. You can't have mm. buckwheat. It's a, it's a cereal. It's a you know, pseudo cereal. You can't have that. <laughs> and as I've looked at all of these things, and then you look at, well, I eat organic food but most of my food is here grown on the west coast and 
There was a, you know, a lot of radiation from Japan several right. years ago, right? And our oceans are pretty toxic. And yeah. that's going into the rain cycle, and that's what's actually going on the plant. So even if you're growing it organic, then there's the soil being depleted, right? And then you think about, well, again, the south where they grew all the cotton fields and the tobacco fields and what happened to that soil. So it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what you do. We are living with toxins, right? whether you eat organic, whether you, I mean, you would have to, like, find some sacred island out in the middle of nowhere that's been under a bubble for a million years to not yeah. have any level of toxin and so when you eliminate all of that judgment out and you say well the reason i'm choosing this is just because maybe less pesticides right mm -hmm. but maybe this item because i'm going to peel all the apples i don't have to worry too much about you know that as much or you know different things like that then you start listening to your body more yes. because then instead of with your mind, I have to do this. I have to do yeah. that. You're listening to, well, what does my body want to do? Right. That's a lifetime to figure out. I think, um, like that's, that's kind of, I guess you state some things. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm using that approach, but I, I haven't stated it to myself. <laughs> But to realize that, like, I find, um, in fact, I just podcasted about this. I love that I get to find truth in all sources, right? And so I want to constantly seek truth from all sources. So, because even if I don't end up believing a full, like, these are the things you're supposed to believe if you are this and these are the things, but I, I want to pull the best from all of it and go, I want to use all of this for my good. And then to listen to myself and go, Oh, okay. That I tried it. That doesn't feel right. So I'll like, I can let that go. But in that process, I even heard someone the other day, they, we were talking about working out or something They're like, Oh, we, you know, I know you don't like to work out. Rebecca is like, where, where did you get that idea? Like, I love to work out. I, I love to do all kinds of stuff. And I love every single day that I do whatever workout I'm doing, because I'm doing it from a place of, I want to go do this. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I'm not overworking out and hurting You're myself. You're not punishing yourself by working out. No. Yeah. And it's rewarding. And because that's where I think and, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel good because I'm like, oh, I tried the sauna. I'm going to keep doing the sauna. I like it. I really, you know, and then there's other things I try like, Nah, I'm not going to include it in my workout if I don't like it. So yes, I love working out. Every part of it serves me because it's tailored to me and I am accepting and rejecting certain things along the way. And it's okay if I write my own book. I don't have to follow that paleo exactly. book or that other book. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. It, it really is about finding what's good for you. And joy sparks happiness. Yeah. Right. And then if you have the things that you've put into your body, I mean, that's really what micronutrient happiness is about. It's like mm -hmm. finding the things that work for your body to create joy for you. Yeah. Right. I mean, my daughter from age 11 with her hormones, she had started having severe migraines. Mm. And so then it became monthly these horrible debilitating wow. migraines every month, once a month. And we knew it had something to do with her hormones. So we tried to seed cycle and do this and do that and nothing seemed to help. Hmm. And we went to a doctor for a whole totally different reason. And he says, and he was trained in, you know, like Peru or something like that. And so he was a different flavor, different mindset. And yeah. he said, well, I would try some B2 and some magnesium. Mm. And I had been so focused on, well, she has MTHFR, so I can't, I'm focused on the methylated folate and the methylated B12 that I had forgot about all the other Bs, right? Oh, like, right. right? Like, so increasing just that B2 and getting her the right magnesium, which we did have to work through because some magnesiums are not like the others. <laughs> Oh, okay. So we had to find the one that was right for her. Again, right, it's fine tuning for you. Yeah. And 
she has not had a severe migraine in three months. Wow. There's always, you know, one thing I really have been learning through this journey is that there is not one way to solve a health problem. No. There's like no. 15 different options. I mean, it, it's experimenting your way to them, but there's a, there's an option for everyone. And not to undermine that people have very serious things that they were born with, but just how amazing it is that there are so many different ways to. And, and it's love, exploring. It's yeah. exploring to find them. The adventure, right? Right. Like that's why we're here is for the adventure. That's yeah. why you love going out and like hiking, right? Like it's part of yeah. that adventure. Right. Um, but when we box ourselves in to it has to be like this, like she could have spent the rest of her life having these horrible debilitating migraines. And right? a lot because, of drugs. And probably because they probably would have tried birth control and hormone patches and who knows what else, right? Yeah. And yeah. two simple micronutrients. P2 and magnesium malate. And that was it. Well, I, I, I know I'm speaking or preaching to the choir here when I say this, but um, I feel like I keep saying on my journey that it feels like uh, when you, when you have a baby, a baby isn't actually that expensive most of the time, but the process of figuring that out is expensive. And I feel like that's the same thing for our bodies. Like when all is said and done and I've tried everything, I'm like, wait a second, I can have these simple nutrients. I can do this little massage. I can do this little lotion. I can do, I signed up for face and neck yoga last week for a little teeny, you know, <laughs> quick five day deal. I'm like, uh -huh. are you kidding me? I can do these exercises every day and make a difference with my face. Well, then by all means, this is going to be part of my <laughs> regimen, but it, it's simple, but it, it's different, right? Because often we would go to doctors or it's going to be this medication or whatever. And now people like starting to go with all the people coming out and talking and sharing, going, wait a second. You know, as you look up a couple of these things, your algorithms change on your social media sites and you start seeing more and more little tiny habits that make massive differences. And I'm like, this is awesome, but it costs a lot of money to figure out which tiny habits work for you. And that's where social media, I think is actually brilliant, yeah. right? Like, I know that people are, a lot of people are against social media and people are against TikTok, especially, right? Yeah. But, you know, my daughter says to me, she'll say, Mom, I wouldn't have known about the earthquakes in XYZ if it wasn't for TikTok. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Like, she's like, and I wouldn't have, I had been telling for years, I'd been saying, I think you've got some sort of pots like issue going on you need more salt and stuff right and so yeah we finally got that diagnosis somebody finally listened to me but it was i think because her belief changed because she saw people with pots on TikTok and was like oh i have that mm. oh i had that i'm not that severe but i do have some of that yeah and it changed her mindset so social media can be used for good Right. But again, it takes the strong foundation, right? Like yeah. if your kids have a strong foundation at home, yeah, then what they're getting nourished by on social media is not going to be extra harmful to them, right? It's kind of like you can go to a restaurant and get E. coli, right? And you've gone there a million times, right? So when you have a strong gut foundation, then you, it doesn't, you know, necessarily, it's not a huge thing if you decide I'm going to have chocolate cake today. Right. As yeah. long as you don't, like you said before, judge that chocolate cake. Yeah. 